The best way to understand percentage uncertainties in physics is to do lots of problems. Grab a pen and paper and let's do some physics. Question one, what is the absolute uncertainty if you measure 21.4 centimeters with a standard ruler? The absolute uncertainty is given by plus or minus the smallest reading that you can take with that particular instrument. With a ruler, our smallest measurement will be one millimeters. So so our absolute uncertainty in this reading will be plus or minus 0.1 centimeters. Please note that some exam boards take the absolute uncertainty to be half of the smallest reading, so double check this. Question two, find the percentage uncertainty in this reading. We're going to use the formula that percentage uncertainty is plus or minus the absolute uncertainty, divide that by the value, multiply that by 100, and this here will just give me 0.1, divide that by 21.4, multiply that by 100, and this is just plus or minus 0.5% up to one significant figure. Next one, we're given all of these values for some masses measured with different top arm balances. What we need to do is to find the total mass and the percentage uncertainty in this reading. Because we are adding quantities, we need to add the absolute uncertainty. Let's find the total mass first of all. If we add up all of those numbers together, we're going to find that m total will just be given by 4.8 kilograms. And because we are adding quantities, what we need to do is add up the absolute uncertainties. So 0.1 plus 0.05 plus 0.2 plus 0.2 will give me the overall absolute uncertainty in the mass, which is going to be 0.5 five kilograms. Let's get rid of this side. We're not done yet though because the question is asking us about the percentage uncertainty in the reading. So what we need to do is absolute uncertainty, which is 0.55, divide that by our value, which is 4.8. A good rule of thumb to remember it is just going to be right over left times by 100. And this here will give me right about 11%. Notice though that pretty much all of these uncertainties are given up to one significant figure. So I'm just going to give my final uncertainty up to one significant figure as well. And I'm gonna leave that as plus or minus 10%. Every problem in physics teaches you something and I'm incredibly excited that I've created 50 unique problems on percentage uncertainties and each of them will teach you a fundamental skill. The problems are arranged in difficulty and you can buy them in my online shop that I'm going to leave as a link in the description. Okay next question which is on the famous Young's double slit formula lambda is ax over d. We're given all of this data and what we need to do is figure out the absolute uncertainty in the wavelength. Now we are multiplying and dividing quantities, so we no longer add the absolute uncertainties, but we need to do is add the percentage uncertainties. So all I need to do is find the percentage uncertainty of this, add up to the percentage uncertainty of this, and then add up this one as well. So what we're gonna get is bracket 0.01, divide that by 0.10, plus percentage uncertainty in this will be 0.1 divided by 2.4, plus this over that, will that give me 0.1, divide that by 30, multiply all of these by 100 to get a percentage, and what we get is around 14.5%. Okay, so we just need to find 14.5% of the value of lambda. But what is the value? Well, let's plug in some numbers. Lambda will be A, which is going to be 0.10. Now let's be careful with the units, millimeters, so multiply that by 10 to the power of minus three, multiply that by X, which is 2.4 centimeters. So times that by 10 to the power of minus 
2. Divide that by 30 times 10 to the power of minus 2. And we're going to get around 8.0 times 10 to the power of minus 6 meters. Okay, so to find the absolute uncertainty in lambda, all I need to do is take that percentage of 8.0 times 10 to the power of minus 6. So this is precisely what I'm going to do. I'm going to do 14.5, divide that by 100, multiply that by 8.0 times 10 to the power of minus 6 and I'm going to get around 1.16 times 10 to the power of minus 6 meters as my absolute uncertainty. All of these, once again, are given up to one significant figure, so I'm just going to be consistent. I'm going to call this around 1 times 10 to the power of minus 6 meters, which is the absolute uncertainty in the wavelength. Next question, we have some data of some voltage with these values here. What we need to do is to figure out the mean and the absolute uncertainty. The rule that we're going to use is that the absolute uncertainty is half of the range of the data. But first, let's figure out the mean. So 5.23 plus 4.95 plus 5.67 plus 5.43, divide that by four. We're gonna find that the mean is equal to 5.3. 32 volts. Now, what is the uncertainty in that value? As we said, this will be half of the range. Now, the range divided by 2 will be the largest value. In this case, the largest value is 5.67. Then we're going to take away the smallest value, which is going to be 4.95. Then we're going to divide that by 2. This gives us 0.36. In other words, the mean value is 5.32 plus or minus 0.36. Volts. Next one, a physicist discovers a quantity which is proportional to x to a power of 7, and we measure x to be 301.57 plus or minus 0 0.01 meters. Find the percentage uncertainty in x raised to the power of 7. Okay, well, remember, anytime we're raising a quantity to that power, this is the equivalent of multiplying that quantity, in this case, 7 times. So the percentage uncertainty in x to the power of 7 is just equal to 7 times the percentage uncertainty in x. So this here will be 7 times. Now the percentage uncertainty in x will be just given by 0 0.01, divide that by 301.57, giving me, let's see, plus or minus 0 0.02%. Okay, are you guys ready for the hardest question of this video? Let's have a look. Two capacitors, 150 nanofarads and 200 nanofarads, are added in series. Find the total capacitance and the absolute uncertainty in our answer if the uncertainty in each capacitor is 10%. Okay, well, how do we find the total capacitance? Remember, they're being added up in the opposite way to resistors. So this means that the total capacitance will be given by 1 over C1 plus 1 over C2 raised to a power of minus 1. This here will just give me 1 over 150 plus 1 over 200 raised to a power of minus 1, i.e. 85.7 nanofarads. The trick in those questions in which we're not using a standard formula such as just pure addition, pure multiplication, and this means that we can no longer apply the usual rules for adding absolute or percentage uncertainties, the trick is to consider the range of our answer. Let me show you what I mean. So the uncertainty in each capacitor is 10%. So this 150 nanofarad capacitor ranges by plus or minus 10%, which is going to be 10% of 150 is just 15 nanofarads, which means that at most this can be 165, and the smallest that value that it can be will be 135. Similarly, for the 200 nanofarad capacitor, which also varies by 10%, so at most this here could be 220 and 180. So let's calculate our answer with the maximum and minimum possible values and then find half of the range. So I'm going to start off with the minimum value. I'm going to call that C subscript 
T min, and this here will just be given by one over, let's see, minimum value will just be 135, and then plus one over the minimum of C2, which will just be 180, raise that to a power of minus one, giving us around 77.1 nanofarads. The maximum values that those can take, let's have a look, CT max, let's call that, this will be given by 1 over 150 plus 15, what is that, 165 plus 1 over 220 nanofarads, raise that to the minus 1, giving me 94.3 nanofarads. Okay, as we said, absolute uncertainty, I'm just going to call that AU, is equal to the range divided by 2. So this here will just be 94.3, take away 77.1, divide that by 2, which is going to give us around 8.6 nanofarads as the absolute uncertainty. So we can write down our answer as 85.7 plus or minus 8.6 nanofarads. Now, if you need some extra practice, check out my Ultimate Uncertainties Physics Worksheet with the link in the description with some detailed solutions at my online shop. Or have a look at this incredibly important video on graphical uncertainties, which we absolutely cannot miss. And this video is right over here.